What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today I'm going to be going a little bit more into how I actually collect my data for my gun guide series. And I feel this is a really important video to make right now, just to set things straight, because I have a lot of people questioning the credibility of my numbers. A lot of people are saying, well, Drifter got this result, why is your result different? Who is right in this situation and who is wrong? So today, I'm going to be going through my exact method of testing, showing you guys how I get my results when it comes to this as well as comparing that to how Drifter gets his results. We did talk about this a little bit on Twitter. You guys might have saw that. He shared exactly how he gets his aim down sight results. And it turns out we actually have a slightly different method for how we calculate our aim down sight times. And this is why we're seeing a variance. Now, to be clear, this video isn't about calling out Drifter and saying he's wrong and I'm right. We have a difference of opinion on how this value should be calculated. And on top of this, when you're looking at frame by frame analysis, Frame rates aren't 100% consistent in this game, and also capture cards may not be 100% consistent, so there's always room for a little bit of error here anyways when you're looking at things that are literally frame by frame. So I just wanted to make sure that is crystal clear here. It's more so I just want you guys to understand how I do my testing. You can see how he does his testing as well, and you can decide for yourself which one of those methods you want to go with. So the reason I'm making this video today is I've had in the past a lot of people saying that Drifter says that stippled grip doesn't work on many of the guns in the game and it actually has no impact on aim down sight time. Whereas in every single test that I have ever done, stippled grip absolutely is helping you. Now on top of that, in his M4 gun guide, he said that the Corvus barrel actually has a slower aim down sight time than the M16 Grenadier barrel. And again, this is not the result that I'm getting. And this isn't just from a single one-off test. I test these multiple times to make sure there isn't some weird situation where I drop some frames. So when testing aim down sight time, the method I use is the moment the animation begins, the moment there is any movement whatsoever in the animation, until the moment your field of view is zoomed in fully. So I'm not looking at the sights, I'm not looking at the gun. What matters here is the moment you are fully zoomed in on the screen. Now the reason I use this time and not the gun animation time is because if you look at the gun animations, with an M4 for instance, the total animation, if you're looking at every little movement of the gun, the total animation is well over 400 milliseconds, which isn't representative at all of how the gun actually performs. Your gun is fully accurate and ready to fire the moment your screen is zoomed in. And I can prove this with the slowest aiming down sight guns in the game, the sniper rifles. You absolutely don't need the full picture of your scope to be fully accurate towards the center of your screen. As long as your field of view has fully zoomed in, you are 100% precise on the center of your screen. Any animation after that is just that. It's an animation, it's unnecessary to the performance of the weapon. Additionally, what I've noticed while using this method is I get very consistent results. Every single time I get very, very consistent results. And it also matches up with what you would expect to see on the attachments, like the Corvus versus the Grenadier barrel, for instance, on the M4. The Corvus should have a faster aim down sight time because it has fewer benefits than the Grenadier barrel and therefore you would expect the downsides to not be as harsh. Same thing goes with the stippled grip. Like I said, consistently the stippled grip is helping every single one of the guns that I have ever tested the stippled grip on. And I've had tons of people asking me to double check because Drifter got some strange result when it comes to aim down sight time that doesn't seem to make sense with how it should be. And when I test it using my method, it actually makes sense. So what I feel is happening here is what I'm measuring is the actual coded aim down sight time, at least to the nearest frame at 60 FPS. So there is a 16.6 .6 millisecond margin of error here. But what I'm measuring is the actual aim down sight time, the amount of time it takes for the gun to be fully accurate on the center of the screen and ready to fire. Whereas Drifter explained his method on Twitter yesterday, and this method definitely makes sense from his perspective. I do understand where he's coming from here. What he looks for, as he explained in his Twitter video yesterday, is the moment that the front sight is fully within the rear sight. So you can see a little gap between the front sight and the rear sight. So his aim down sight time would be considered at this point right here because the front sight is fully within that rear sight. Now, like I said, in some ways this absolutely makes sense because that's when you actually have your sight picture and in real life, that's how you would want it to be, of course. You wanna get your full sight picture before taking the shot. 
However, there are a few issues that I have with this and a few reasons I chose not to use this method when I started testing aim down sight time early on. First off, this is a little bit subjective and it changes depending on the iron sight and some barrels will completely change up the look of your iron sight and therefore that can have an impact on your aim down sight time. Additionally, the barrel length will also have an impact on this, so even if they have the same iron sights themselves, which I believe the Grenadier and the Corvus barrels have identical front sights, with one barrel being longer than the other, when you just look at how perspectives work, you're going to see that full front sight sooner on the longer barrel because that front sight is smaller from your perspective. It's further away from you. So that pretty much fully explains why he's getting the result that he's getting here, where the Corvus looks like it's taking longer to aim down sight when looking at the animation, when in reality, you're actually fully centered, ready to go, with 100% precision on the center of your screen before that full sight picture is formed with the Corvus. So hopefully that covers it for you guys. Like I said, I'm not here to say Drifter's wrong, I'm right. It's two different methods. I definitely understand where he's coming from with his method, because for a lot of people at least, that's exactly what they would wait for to fire anyways. They would wait until they can see their sight picture. So in a practical sense, for a lot of players, it does absolutely make some sense. However, if you're just looking at the raw performance of the weapon, and I feel like when you're looking at the higher skill levels where you get a feel for when the gun is fully accurate, the field of view method is going to be better for you because it allows you to take advantage of every single frame possible. Now on that same note as well, at the end of the day, we're talking just a couple frames here. And for the average player out there, they're not even going to notice the difference in one to maybe two frames. After two frames, yes, even a casual player will start to notice a difference. However, at that same time, if you're at the professional level, for instance, literally every single frame counts when it comes to this, and they will notice this frame by frame difference. So it is really up to you to decide which numbers you'd rather go with. At least now you know where both of us are coming from when it comes to this. There will always be some variance. And even outside of aim down sight time, anytime Drifter and I get different results, a big thing to keep in mind this year is Infinity Ward has been doing stealth patches. And this means there have been changes that are made that they don't mention. And since they don't mention them, we aren't aware that they exist. And maybe Drifter did his testing pre-patch, whereas I did mine post-patch. And that's why we get different results or something along those lines. That can be an issue right there. And also, we are both human. We both make mistakes. I have made some mistakes with testing in the past. Drifter has made mistakes with testing in the past as well. Neither of us is perfect in this area, and we never will be completely perfect. We will always make mistakes, but anytime I make a mistake, I always try my best to correct that mistake at some point. But yeah, that pretty much covers everything I wanted to say in today's video. Again, this isn't a shot at Drifter, nothing like that. We do work together on a lot of stuff when it comes to this. And I absolutely do consider him to be a friend within this community. So I don't want you to go after him or anything because of this video. It's just a difference of opinion. And I wanted to point that out for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. And I'll talk to you guys next time.